Hey, I'm McKay, and by the end of this video, you're going to have better vocal chops. Let's start this off by listening to some examples. I, I don't want to I don't want to waste your time. Check this out. So those are chops from my track Astoria that came out a few years ago. It's like a progressive house tune that I made. Very Lane 8 inspired. Uh, let's take a look at another example we're going to go over today. Quite a different example there. That's a track I signed to Hexagon. It's called Pass Key of Hearts. It's like a little VIP I did of it, so it's a little bit different than the release. And lastly, we have a new whip from me. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna leak too much of this one because I'm excited for when I'm gonna like actually release it. But um, I'll give you an example. <laughs> So we're pulling a lot of influence from, you know, Porter, Lane 8, Skrillex, um, especially like the first one's very Lane 8. These are a little bit more Porter. I think the second example is a little bit more Skrillex. Um, so we're, we're bouncing around a little bit there. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is McKay. I'm going to do a brief overview of, you know, how I made these chops, how I'm processing them. I think a really important thing to look at is also like the source, like just have a really clean source, use vowel sounds, you know, those are often really good to go for if you want like a clean, clear chop. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into it here. I'm, I'm new to making production content, so hopefully you enjoy this and um, thanks for checking it out. Let's, let's take a look. I hate, <clears throat> I hate in production videos when, you know, they say they're going to do something and then like they don't even show you an example. They just kind of like start fucking doing it. I think it's so important to like hear what we're going to do. Because it's like, yeah, wait, I don't want you to fucking waste your time on something that sounds like shit. If you don't like it, you know, I want you to like, I want you to like what you're watching. Um, all right, let's take a look at our first example here. Help if I turn the group on. Yeah, there we go. All right, that might be a little bit loud. Let me. Okay. I think we're all right there. So, yeah, as I mentioned, these chops are definitely inspired by Lane 8. Um, it's from a track I made a few years ago. It's called Astoria. I'll show you how I made these chops in the first place. Uh, this was the original sample I used. I want you to want, babe. Way different. Way fucking different. Um, you can find this sample on Splice. Uh, yeah, I think I got it from Splice. And by the way, if this, if my content here takes off or, or does well, you know, feel free to share these videos with a friend or, or whatnot. Um, if my production content does well, I'll probably start a Patreon, sample packs, all that kind of stuff. But I just want to make some videos and share some techniques that I've been using over the years um, to start out. But yeah, so this is, this is the sample that I used. I want you to run, and a lot of them are pitched up about five semitones. So you'll already start to hear what I was going for with this pitched up five semitones just um i'm not i'm not warping it on complex or anything just up five semitones so we're already getting a lot closer to like the tonality of these other jobs oh shit sorry let me do this way a lot closer already obviously there's like delays and other processing going on but a lot closer here are the chops that I have pitched down so that you can kind of hear how we're, how we're going to take them. Um, it's a little bit different because I recreated this. You know, I didn't get it exactly right. Um, and if you have good vocal chops, you shouldn't be able to recreate them perfectly. Um, every time it should be a little bit different. You know, that's kind of how it's kind of music in general, right? Um, so I'm going for a lot of those vowel sounds here. I'm going for, like, I'll, I'll just pull this audio file back. I'm using the word want. You know, it's a lot want. It's not very consonant, which makes it really easy to use for a vocal chop because 
you know, we're, we're going to compress, uh, I don't know if I did that here, but in, in vocal chops now, I definitely compress them a bit more. Um, they don't need like a really sharp consonant attack, at least not, not this style in like a progressive house tune. Like they're, they're going to sit in the back of the mix a bit more, you know, they don't need to be <laughs> nothing like that. Nothing sharp and in your face uh very light so that's why i'm using vowel sounds let's take a look at this vowel again both of them are coming from that want you know it's it's an easy word to to get a good chop from this one just pitched down a bit more and i'm just using the a from that one you know it's it's like it's saying like me or babe, babe, I don't fucking, it's a splice vocal sample, what do you, yeah, there you go, um, but I'm just using the A from that, again, vowel sounds, helps a lot, and here's, like, me trying to recreate it, pretty close, pretty close to what I had originally, um, sorry, this one keeps starting here, I should have pushed this back further, but we're moving on to this section now, so, you know, I took what I had here, and I pitched it up five semitones, and then this one, I think, uh, is four semitones. I am using warping algorithms here. I'm using Complex and uh, was using Complex Pro there just to get the tonality a little closer to my chops. It's really close. A little bit different, you know, in the moment, perhaps I used something else to correct the formant, like maybe little altar boy. I, I don't really remember. I don't even have the original chain and chops. I just have this now. So again, I mean, just now really quick. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not here to, to dilly dally really quick. We move from, you know, the sample chopping it up and then pitching it up and we're, we're, we're here. We're here. The rest is um is processing, and uh, I think there's some like other. Yeah. Sorry, it's like really loud. I should I should still turn this down a bit. Um. You know, experiment, have fun, chop things up, get get your vowel sounds going, and pitching it up helps a lot too because we're introducing some, you know higher frequencies and you know if, you, if you're pitching down you have down sampling and, and it can degrade the quality which can be really cool that can be a very useful tool for you know different forms of sound design but if you want something like crisp and to hit a reverb and like you know really sparkle and shine you're going to want to be pitching them up and that's what you know I want you to run, babe. That's how we take something like this, which kind of sounds a little bit flat, and you know, it's just a splice vocal, so it's, it sounds like flat, compressed. It's like very like dull, and pitching it up, you know, adding some reverb, delay. We're in, we're spicing it up. We're spicing it up. All right, let's turn it off. All this other shit that keeps distracting me. Sorry. <laughs> um, on the chop here, just reverb. It doesn't help that I have this other stuff on. Let me... Let's chop here, just reverb. And I made this a few years ago, so I probably wouldn't process this the same way now, but let's take a look at what I did. A um, little bit of 2.8K resonance. Took that out. I don't, I don't even know if I'd make that decision now, but here we are. Ooh, Saturn 1. You know, Saturn 2 then. It's just saturation um, <laughs> with the mix on zero, but I guess it gets automated up at some point in the be in the beginning of whatever this was. I don't know. I was like four years younger when I made this five years younger. So I can't, I can't trust my mixing decisions then. What did I know? Let's move on. <laughs> filter. I think that's just for like this little fill here. Yeah, super simple, just auto filter. Uh, we got Saturn again here. 
This Saturn's on. Lightly driven saturator. Let's take it off and AB it. It's definitely adding a bit of gain, a bit of brightness. Um, I think nowadays I'd probably gain stage that. I, I know I know it's a little bit louder now. I'd probably have a utility after that, bringing it back down, you know, just managing expectations there, not just going with something because it's more exciting, um, actually analyzing, you know, the changes it's, it's making. But um, there we go. We have that. A little bit of compression. Really just sharpening things up a bit. Uh, multi-band it's lifting a lot of the mids but not so much the highs maybe it's still lifting the highs a bit hmm. oh, I was expanding there I I can't tell you mixing why I did these things I did them I, you know some expansion there if you if you want to find out why you're gonna have to ask like fucking 22 year old me 21 year old me all right so that's our multiband. Now on to delay. Replica. Replica is a, a beautiful, you know, digital delay here. Uh, looks like I'm using Replica and Replica XT in different amounts and automating them throughout the track. Um, some of the automation probably got messed up because I just copied this over from another project file, but, uh, you know, play with automating your effects, especially like reverb and delay. Sometimes it can get a little monotonous hearing the same fucking delay and, and reverb throughout the whole track. So, um, break it up a bit, you know, introduce some different reverbs and, and delays and automate them in and out on the dry wet. Nowadays I'm doing a lot of, uh, this I'll do, um, if you, if you turn this into a group on windows, it's control G, uh, Mac, it's command G. And then uh, click this, the, the little like taskbar looking thing. It opens up the different chains here. You can create a chain. And this is just setting different, it's setting up different signal pathways um, with the same sound. So whatever's hitting before this is being broken up and, and repeated kind of. So um, if I just played it right now, it'd be like two layers of the same sound playing. But what you can do here, which is really helpful, you can like turn on a reverb, put on 100% wet, and then, you know, filter the reverb differently. Um, something I'm doing a lot lately. It's a little late for me here, and I don't know if you can see the time in the... <laughs> I'm blocking the time in the in the bottom right. Um, if you if you don't believe me, it's... Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but it's it's like 1.12 a.m. here in Brooklyn. So I'm, if I'm a little scattered here, I'm doing my best. I just... I wanted to get this video out, so here we are. Um, you can filter your reverb perhaps a little bit differently so the reverb is right there that's the reverb um and you know i can filter that it's on 100 percent wet and then i can have my dry layer of course there's delay there i'll turn that off and you know maybe i want to turn that down a bit but now what you can do is you can go through and you can like automate the volume here or you can automate um the volume going into the reverb this is like the the full chain but if you add a utility you can automate that so you know only certain parts are going into this reverb it'd be really helpful for mixing things up in an interesting way um especially at, like the end of sections like if we just had this last note here hit this reverb You know, more spacious there. It's just a cool way to have more interesting effects, I think, happening. Um, and you can, you know, do this with different layers. Have, like, you know, one chop hit this reverb, another chop hit a delay, so on and so forth. Uh, There's just a technique I've been using a lot lately, so I figured I'd demonstrate it here. Uh, I'll just turn that off. I'm going to walk you through the rest of this chain here. We have an EQ, some wonky shit. I probably would not fucking do this shit now. Um, I just, it, this seems weird. This seems, it seems like there's something else I could do. Like, perhaps not have the saturator be so bright or something if I'm gonna duck it by that much. Um, 
this is more so what I do now. This is, you know, these like minor EQ adjustments. This is a little chaotic. Let's just throw this all back on. And this is where I think we were. I think that was 43%, but you get the idea. Here we go. These are the chops. You know, we walk through my, my processing for them. Uh, it's nothing complicated. Some decisions I, I wouldn't even make anymore, but that's, that's for a different time. Um, another way to do chops here. I don't really love that chop, to be honest. Just using, um, was this simpler? Just using, or no, this is sampler. Yeah, just using sampler. Um, you can load in chops there, and you can play them, you know, with your with your keyboard and whatnot, and get a little bit more. You know, if you like using MIDI to control your chops and whatnot, and not what I did here, where I used an audio file to chop through vowels and, and find what I like. If you want to use MIDI, great great tool too you know use whatever's available to you have experiment you know with the same chops in different forms put one through put one audio a vocal you know file through audio and chop it up put one in this in a midi rack you know do different things uh to get you know unexpected results let's see what we have here So these are little glitches I made. I probably would have made these by like resampling with reverb or something and or, or delay and reversing or I think that might be replica. I'm not sh I was using a lot of replica at this time. Um, I know it kind of sounds like granular like portal, but I don't think I had portal when I made this song. Yeah, I, I was probably experimenting with delays, uh, you know, just putting a delay on 100% wet, running my chops here through it, and then recording recording the delay at 100% wet, and then chopping it up for little fills. Um, you can hear that in the track here, too. It's just adding some nice, I don't know, subtle character movement again breaking up the monotony of these chops by just having them come in a little bit different just altered um let's hear this one. Oh, sorry about that so yeah just helping with the flow uh these little chops that come in just helping with the flow and breaking up the monotony it's important to keep things fresh especially with vocal chops because what are you emulating a vocal you know that's why I'm, I'm suggesting different effects, different forms of, of making your chops and everything, because, you know, if a vocalist is singing something two, three times for a track, for a chorus, um, it's going to be a little bit different each time. And that difference helps helps keep things fresh. So experiment, tweak the, the minor details. It really does add a lot to the final track in the end. All right, let's take a look at another example. I'm going to drink some tea. Um, and wipe the tea off my mustache. Excuse me. <laughs> um, this other example we got here is from my song Passkey of Hearts that came out on Hexagon. Again, this example is using like a VIP that I made. Oh. So it's a little bit different than the version I released, but um, it, it's fine. It's fine. Let me turn this on. Right. So this chop that kind of kicks things off, uh, I'll play it in the track. Was just something cool I came up with. I think I was using stutter edit at the time. Um, let me open it up here. Sorry, I didn't want to burp into the microphone um stutter edit here it's a pretty cool plugin by what uh isotope which aren't they owned by native instruments now I, I think so anyway uh you can it has different like banks and then you use midi to control which 
presets playing. I don't have MIDI routed to this, but you'll route MIDI to this plugin, and then you can just, like, click through different effect presets. Let me put it on... I'll just put it on the track, the, the track render here. And you'll really hear what it's doing. Um... That's sick. Instantly so sick. And that's on the, the full track. So, I mean, you can only imagine with the vocals and on different elements <clears throat> what ideas you might have. But I know I use this plugin a lot in my song, Pass Gave Hearts. If you go check it out, uh, you'll hear this plugin all throughout it. Bunch of, like, glitchy little bloops and blips um, from this. And don't feel like you need to have this exact software to accomplish this stuff. Um, you know, different limitations allow for different results, right? So stutter right here, you could you could do that by just chopping an audio file. You could repeat, you know, small parts of an audio file. Um, chorus, I mean, there's free choruses all over the, the internet and whatnot. There's just one patch, for example, but... Um, uh, Tal Chorus is a really good free chorus if you're looking for a good free chorus VST. Tal Chorus. This thing, I use it, this is the only chorus I use. Just this chorus, and it's free. So, if you need a chorus, there, there you go. Um, but, yeah, don't feel like you need to go out and get this exact software because it did something cool for me. Um, you can, you probably have other tools in your doll that are exactly the same tools in here. Um, these are just different like presets that apply those, I don't know, apply stutters and reverbs and flangers and all that shit, but that shit's native to like every doll. So you, you don't need this to have these results. You can just, you know, tweak really small details and automation and whatnot and chop audio and end up with similar or better, different, interesting results. Uh, but that's how I specifically made a lot of the little fills here. It's probably really quiet. Yeah. That was a lot of stutter edit. Um, I don't really see a need to unfreeze what I have here. It looks like I probably used stutter edit and then there's probably a little bit of, like delay or reverb automated. Uh, Transient master was probably like taking off some attack. Soothe, EQ. The processing there isn't isn't really relevant, I don't think. Some other little blips here. Um, another great tool, I will unfreeze it for this, that I used on these chops a lot, micro shift. Um, it's a type of... I know I just said Tau Chorus, like the only chorus I use. This is technically a chorus um, for all, you know, I don't, I don't know. This Technically, it's like detunes and delays, like a minor bit and pans things out. And that's that's what a chorus does, but um, or it just causes like phase issues, but in a pleasing way. Anyway, this plugin is great at adding width without compromising mono compatibility. Like, you're still getting a pretty solid signal there in mono, which is super important for playing your music at clubs and whatnot, um, or on mono speakers. And, oh, that was even running through, oh no, the reverb is on a very small amount there, I think, or not even on at all. Cool. Um... Yeah, Microshift is a great... It's better than, like, a Haas delay. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Haas delay... It basically just delays one side, like, the, the left side, a little bit more than the right side, or vice versa, um, by just a couple milliseconds. Like, you can see here on this kilohertz one, it goes from 0 0.1 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds, and you can choose which channel's delayed, the left or the right. It's 
I, I like Microshift more, even though its its delay is probably doing that same thing. With this detune option, these different styles, I feel like I can tweak it to get a more precise result and a result that isn't um, that that is mono compatible. So, Microshift shouts out. That's by Sound Toys. A uh, great plugin for mono compatible stereo width. Yeah. So a lot of these chops, I don't have the original rack. I think it's on <clears throat> a different computer of mine. But this, I was definitely using simpler. So uh, example of that. Let's pull in simpler. I'll drag a vocal sample here. They have this slice mode. Um, and you can feel free to mess around with the other modes too of course but this slice mode just instantly let me solo this so you can hear it it's probably really loud sorry just instantly lets you you know chop things up and and it's a different method than what we looked at you know just a moment ago with my other track Astoria this method um, instead of messing with the audio file itself we're chopping here with MIDI and um, it in like a bigger vocal file uh, audio file this sensitivity tool can really be helpful because it's not really doing much here because these are all like pretty prominent transients but it essentially changes, you know, the threshold for what it considers a transient and places different notes there. So if I press the same key here and then change the sensitivity, it, it changes what part's playing because it either, you know, adds or takes away notes um, from the available options out there. So you can even, like, just have a little bit of... You can have, like, MIDI playing... C, for example, if we just go to like C3, you can set up like the rhythm you want. And then you can change the sensitivity or like move this around. And just get some different examples. Um, obviously, that's not like a very coherent example. <laughs> um, not a really coherent display of how I'd use this. But you can just have the track playing and, you know, move this around and just have a really long MIDI file and get a bunch of different examples over, or a, a bunch of different ideas over that period of time. And then if you hear something you like, you know, if I was like, this is it. This is the best chop I've ever heard. You know, there we go. Lock it in. And then maybe I could try to like move some other notes around. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm cooking. I'm making heat over here. Um, but you get the idea. You get the idea. Just another way of generating ideas, uh, coming up with new inspiration. So here, I'm chopping an audio file again, but I'm using some phrases and, uh, you know, letting a little bit more through. I'm not just going for like a vowel sound and pitching it around and whatnot, but I am, you know, to make it interesting and to make it more like a vocal chop, I'm, I'm filtering a lot and I have some tremolo going on there and I'm automating the tremolo. So, you know, we'll see. another interesting way to process vocals and i'm not really looking for a phrase that you can like repeat or sing i'm just going for what's melodically interesting so uh, th those are from astoria these chops are from that last project we were, or the last i guess idea we were looking at um, but here, you know, we're using tremolo and effects, filtering, reverb 
to take a what would be a phrase that would probably be unpleasant. I can't say go back, go back. Not bad. Back, go back, go. It's just very like in your face and I don't know, not very interesting, just very dry on its own. But by adding the tremolo and reverb, we're we're kind of making it ours. You know, we're putting our stylistic touch on it. Back go, back go. It's no longer just like a splice sample. Like now I've I've chopped it, I've processed it how I want to. It's kind of taking on a new life. It's not just like some out of the box dry fucking granola flakes. So I made these samples, these like vocal chops with the Astoria chops. Um, you can't see it here. Oh, there we go. That probably sounds familiar. Um, it, they're repitched, of course. Is that close to it? I don't know. Perhaps, but you hear what's going on there. Basically, I, I took the chops that I made for another song that I released and then I just sped them up and processed them differently. Micro shift, like I mentioned, using that a lot now. Uh, automating some reverb, filtered them. And, you know, here, now we have, I'm repurposing chops I made before that I liked in, into a new context and keeping them interesting. So it's not just the same thing. So you'll see kind of an upgrade or like it's still this is a little cluttered a little more chaotic than I'd like um, It's for a VIP. I haven't put out yet. So that, that's why uh, it's not something finished here But in the original track, it's a little bit more subdued um, You'll notice I'm using some some interesting parts of the vocal Like here this is like a, a shh or something some some ch sound that has delay on it but it's like a really nice texture. So don't be afraid to use different textures or, or part or different parts of the vocal as texture um, to, to fill in different areas. You know, it's kind of like a whispery high end thing, whereas this is a little bit more body and and filtered and and muffled, um, but together. They're really filling up that full frequency spectrum, that full range. So different parts of vocals, um, using simpler or, or other tools to chop vocals, using processing like stutter edit or, you know, just manually chopping up a vocal in more minor ways by, I don't know, duplicating small parts of it, stuttering. Um, if you hold shift in Ableton and it's like warping, uh, you have you have like warping turned on um you can like warp things in interesting ways like oh here let me let me turn this back on there we go use the tools available to you um experiment and, and you'll come up with cool ideas like that right there. That's that sounds like something that could lead somewhere interesting, and um, you know, stretching, manipulating, processing. Th there's tons of cool ways to make a vocal more interesting. I don't know. You don't need to keep your vocal chop super like mundane and just like straight out of the box from from a splice vocal chop. You know, there's there's many ways to put your own flair and to kind of create your own style with it. <laughs> Those little like blips you hear there, that's um I think my mini log running through that stutter edit program. Super interesting. I don't know, it just comes up with these glitchy textures and chops and, and I really liked using it on this track. So if that plugin does seem interesting to you, um they're not sponsoring this video, so I don't give I don't really care. Go check it out if you want, but until the until they sponsor me and I got a promo code for you, I'm not saying you gotta go get it. If I come back in my next video and I'm saying you gotta go get it, that means I got the bag. Okay, let's take a look at our last example here. What do we, we're at like 34 minutes. Okay, I'm trying to keep this like concise and move quickly. It's probably a little sporadic, but I don't want to waste time. I don't know. I don't want to like 
be like, first add an EQ. Then this is what it sounds like with an EQ. Like, I, you can watch the video a bunch and, and see the little things I'm doing and, and hear me ramble again. I, I don't need to waste your time by being like, let's raise the volume by one. Okay, whatever. You get it. You get it. All right. Next example is an unreleased track of mine. <laughs> That's all I'm leaking. That's all I'm leaking here. You'll have to wait till I drop the fucking album before you get more of that. All right, what are we working with? All right, I'm just chopping and, and I think I was probably reprocessing the full group here just to get like a little intro thing. Um, this kind of builds in from another section to introduce our chops it has like a little bit of a little bit of fucking radio transmission uh, before our chops play so something new with these chops that we did not have in the other ones i'm using my own vocal i'm using my own voice so this is these are vocals that i have from another track that's not out yet and it's going to sound like shit because it's repitched and there's weird form and shifting on it so don't don't judge me. Please don't judge me. Look at you, you be that good. Look at you. I'm not a good singer, but don't judge me. So it's a super like breathy, like high vocal for me. And if I take this processing off, it still sounds really weird because of the formant and how this was repitched. Um, and I think it already had some processing on it anyway. But I'm using Little Alter Boy to bring down the form in a bit. Um, and then I'm automating the form in so that it kind of changes as this chop plays. So this is my formant automation, and I'm doing that again, like I mentioned earlier, to keep things fresh, to keep things moving. If this was like an actual vocal performance, it wouldn't be sung the same every single time, so don't have your chops sound the same every single time, unless you want to, and then do. I don't know. Not your mom. Um. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so... Uh, I think that's the only thing to show there. Yeah, little alter boy. Four mint. I'm using my own voice. Don't be afraid to sing and just throw some, throw a bunch of fucking auto tune on it, and then chop up your own voice. It can be cool. Um, this. I'm just using a little session strings pluck, um, like a little violin pluck to emphasize the note. I stole that trick from Ian Kirkpatrick. Um, he did this in Move Me with Charlie XCX and probably a bunch of other songs, but he has a, a breakdown of Move Me um, where he shows like using other synths to accentuate certain like words a singer sings or something like that. Um, and I applied that to Chops by adding, you know, just a little plucky layer, which, um, and that, that happens up here too, I'll show you in a moment, but just to emphasize the, the Chop. Just emphasizes that note, that part of it. And it only happens, I think, once in this whole thing. But it's just a cool way to add some variation. You know, emphasize one chop there and... Ugh. What the fuck was that alien-ass sound? Um, I'm doing that here as well. This was with uh, Sign Plant 2, Sign Plant, Sign Plant, whatever it is. I just had imported my vocal chop, and it came, up, came out with these, like, plucks that sound not, that don't really sound like a vocal chop. But it was another good way to accent some of the chops. So it's not playing on every single chop, but it's a little, little pluck going on to accent some of them. Yeah. 
you can see the notes that it's accenting. Keeping things fresh. And I'm using two layers of it because I think this had like a nice tonality that differed from this one. Yeah, and I like that. So, um, synths can be a good way to accent certain vocal chops as well. For the processing here, uh, my processing is a little less chaotic and a little more methodical. Here, I'm using this mag EQ to just boost the high end a bit. Pro MB. Just taming the mids and the, the highs differently. Pro Q, very light EQ adjustments. Gem Dopamine. I need to update Gem Dopamine, but Gem Dopamine. This is a trick I got from Disclosure. Um, they put this on fucking everything, and it does sound really beautiful on acoustic elements. Um, let's do a little A, B. Make sure I don't play that again. Obviously, it's a little bit louder when it's on, but it's also boosting the high end a bit. So, just another way to have some more high end information. Um, oxide tape, probably also getting some high end from this. Ever so slightly, some warmth. Uh, API 550. Looks like I'm boosting 2 dB at 800 hertz. It's adding a little bit of grit there. More multiband, kind of mirroring the multiband from earlier. And Pro Q with some subtle EQ adjustments. That was kind of my process with all these chops. There's more shit on the group. We have compression happening. Just on the really loud moments, it's not triggered always. DSing. It's not really doing much. Uh, perhaps it was doing more in some other variation, but um, it's not doing much here. In fact, I don't see it hitting green at all, but there's a reason it was there earlier. If you end up not using it, that's okay. Our boy Microshift is making an appearance again. This is the technique I talked about earlier where you can automate different effects in and out. Like you can see, this is some intense automation here. Let's look at this one. This is reverb. Very lifeless without it. And now those chops are filling up all the space. I'm automating it out when the chops are hitting, um, kind of like a manual sidechain. I think it's also being sidechained to the dry version, but at least this way I'm, I'm really making sure the chops come through clear and then the reverb fills in the space after it. Um, it's a pretty minimal track, so it was important that, you know, they weren't just lost in reverb. <laughs> And, you know, I'm automating delays in. Am I automating delays in? Maybe not there. What over here? Uh, there you go. You can hear that delay. Um, yeah, so, again, automating different effects in and out. Keep it fresh. That's my. That's the motto here. Keep it fresh. Soothe. Uh, it's only on point four. Just some light reduction. That's what it's getting rid of right there. Just cleaning it up a little bit. Um, light Pro Q. Pro MB. A little bit of clipping. And, again, light EQ and some volume automation. So, not too much to this. It's it's subtle adjustments adjustments that, like, all come together to make a big impact. Um, I'm not being as drastic with any of my processing nowadays. It's a, it's a stark difference from, you know, the first set of vocal chops we looked at where there were crazy 
EQ curves and like no gain staging and all that fun stuff. So that track will hopefully be out at the beginning of next year, beginning of 2024. So if this sounds interesting to you, I'm not going to play more of it, but you can you can keep your ears peeled. <laughs> um, that is going to wrap up my, my chop overview here. I'm sure it was a little bit chaotic. Um, first video, just trying, trying to try different things out. If you did find this helpful, please do share it with someone, you know, get, get this video some views passed around because if this does well, I'll keep doing this shit. I'll start a Patreon. I'll upload this project file. Um, yeah, just want to start making videos and stuff. So, uh, comment below if you'd like to see some other things that I do with production. Um, thank you for checking this out. I'll keep things short and sweet. I'm not, I know this video is like 45 minutes long, so not too short and sweet, but short and sweet enough. Uh, I hope you enjoyed checking this out and, you know, thank you for, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll put some info in the bio to, you know, my music and links. You, you know, you know what people do on here. I don't need to tell you. All right. Take care. Thank you.